He's just gonna go on the butterfly here, and I want some like 40 or 50 percenters, like super smooth, easy ones. Just watch the puck in and over exaggerate after the puck hits you. So one thing that Belfort would do in practice, it would drive everybody crazy. He'd hold the watch at the moment, moment he stopped it, just as a warm up, just to really see it in there, exaggerate it. Okay, let's go to the blocker now. Straight out where your stick is touching that, and then I'm gonna want you to explode, get power, and then you're gonna slide over through here, and he's just gonna pump one into you. But the puck is really nothing to do with this drill, I don't give a shit about that. The thing I give a shit about on this is from a dead stop, how quickly you can go zero to 60. So this is a zero to 60 drill. And once you're hard back, then push over for him in a slidey bar fight. Caesar with chicken. Got eggs in there too? Yeah, some of the legs, but I only got one bowl, not that. When I was playing for Miami of Ohio, I was playing against Bowling Green, and at that point, I think Nelson Emerson and Rob Blake had probably already got three by me, like in a normal game. And I three hand them, drop them like a tree, and the referee comes over and gave me a five minute slash. No, you gotta serve it. I said, What? I've been a goalie my whole life, I've never been in a penalty box, so they put me over in the box and all the Bowling Green fans just ripping me new ones and I thought this is the most amazing thing ever and by that point the backup goalie was in, my penalty was up, I skated over and sat my ass back on the bench so I got pulled after that but in college hockey not a lot of people realize that the goalie serves major penalties. How about this right here, get your camera going quick. quick. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Unroll the window, unroll the window. One of the things we've tried to do over the years is get the most out of our goaltenders and I firmly believe that doing a lot of private lessons get you really good at doing lessons. I started the mentor program back 15, 20 years ago to try to get goalies the furthest they can go in their hockey career and build a relationship with the parents and the goalies and sort of formulate their path to get the most out of them. So we have calls after every game, 
where we go through the scoring chances, things they did well, things they need to work on. We basically teach the kid to take your skills and apply them in the game. We teach you how to play the game. We take kids and we leverage my Rolodex and open up my scouting database and get people placed on teams they deserve to be on. Now, I can't get you to play in the NHL if you're a junior B goalie, but if you're a junior B goalie, I can make sure you're able to get on the team you deserve to be on. So the mentor program's been very successful over the years. Check out our Hall of Fame at futurepro.com Hall of Fame, and you'll see some of the kids that we've put at the higher levels. It's not for everybody. It's a premium program. If you want to be considered, just reach out to me at futurepro.com. And that will include the segment. Today's Q&A is advice-themed questions. Does the height of a goalie matter now like it did back in the 90s and early 2000s? It certainly does. There's some mythology out there right now that maybe there's some trend towards smaller goalies, and that's a complete fabrication of In Goal Magazine. Seaman CL, I'm 12, love the sport and goalie, but is it too late for me to start playing? No, there's lots of goalies that have got late starts, and, and don't start playing with the idea of playing in the NHL. Start playing because you love the sport, so there's no age that's too old to start. If you're talking about is it too old to start and have a chance to be an NHL All-Star? Yes. I think the reason why it's too late is functionally goalies have been training on their skating transition all the tactical and technical things since they were 9 10 11 years old and to pick it up late like that you're so far behind the curve it's not going to help you be an NHLer but it can help you become a great hockey player if you love it and want to get into it and, and take it the farthest you can so don't let it discourage you Logan Vale what does it take to get to the next level You've got to completely, objectively, and subjectively dominate the current level you're at. I, I frequently have kids that'll say, you know what, I want to play AAA, but they're playing A or single A, and they're middle of the road, middle of the bell curve guys with a 900 save percentage. If you're 920 save percentage or above in the level that you're at, you likely could play at the next level. Ethan Kearney, what is the key to success of goaltending? Controlling the puck. Control relates to possession, and that's 100% hockey in a nutshell. The other team can't score when you possess the puck. So possession is going to be rebound control where it sticks with you. You can manage the clock there. It's possession when you're handling the puck and your positional play will let you control the puck as well because you're not going to be having bad rebounds if you're in the right spot. Callum 31, what is the best way for me to get noticed by team? If you're just doing okay in the level you're at, it's not going to be something that scouts will notice. Consistently managing rebounds and consistently delivering peak performances eight or nine games out of ten. What are some things that you should focus on the most when you're starting out as a goalie? very first thing that you got to worry about as a goaltender is to become a great goalie skater. It's a complete myth that you have to be the best goalie, the best skater on the team. You just have to be the best goalie skater. So when you're getting started, learn how to use your edges. Learn how to get to places up on your edges, and then you can worry about the down game like RVH play and other post play and other technical and tactical things later. How can I improve my game in the offseason? Get a slide board, get rollerblades, and pound away on the slide board working on your lateral slides. You can get pad covers for that. On your rollerblades, use your blocker, trapper, fire hard balls against the cement wall at the grocery store. Come up with ways to be creative to train yourself off the ice. It doesn't take a lot of money to do training on your own. You just have to be creative. If I'm right hand dominant, should I switch from shooting and catching left to doing it right? I would say that whatever hand you catch a baseball with is how you should play goal. Funny I catch baseballs with my left hand. And that's the proof of my argument right there. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I can, like in baseball, I can catch left or right hand and no problem. Right. But, like any day of the week, but I, I feel comfortable holding a stick in this hand. I couldn't right. do it in this hand. I think a lot of times the physical strength is required to hold the stick. Is, is If you try to play the opposite hand, the stick feels like a noodle in your hands. But I, I always tell kids, whatever you catch with. Ethan and Buell, how do you stay motivated and focused after being cut? Mindset and your approach to being cut. Now, people get all butt hurt and all depressed and all wound up because they got cut. The healthy way to think about it is, that's awesome, I got cut, perfect. Now I got another guy to put on my list of who I'm gonna prove wrong. I used to use that as motivational fuel to prove all these turds wrong that cut me. So enjoy being cut and just use that as motivation. Write them down and when you decide whether you're gonna do dry land training or not on a given night, pop that book out and look at some of those people that cut you. You should welcome it and love it and use it to fuel your motivational fire. J. Allen 03, how much can my equipment really affect my play? I think a lot of people get very preoccupied with the equipment and they, they worry about Bennington's latest strapping style or how he curves his stick or spend less time on Instagram looking at gear stuff and more stuff at the hill sprinting up and down it or on the ice working on your transitions. Focus on gear, more focus on getting better. People go way over the top in the spectrum and some spy footage online shows that Carey Price changed his cowling. If you spend half an hour a day looking at crap like that, that you could be developing uh, your career that hasn't happened yet, you're wasting your time. Stop with the wasting time and get productive 
stuff happening with your goalie development. Your window of development is very small. Don't waste it on goofy stuff like blocker sleeve and you know swivel vision stuff. Work on productive stuff that's actually going to make you better. Spent a lot of time focusing on gear when I was younger. Yeah, and look where I ended up. <laughs> I like on, now, honestly, it might not be causation, but it's it's something that if you think of that time that you invested on that. If it was put into other things directly related, like your backhand clear or... Well, I thought the fact that, that I had a, a natural colored shaft on my stick and a white paddle would make it, it harder for the shooter to score. That I had a 600 glove instead of a 580, you know what I'm like? Yeah, that's you're, not, you're not the only one. And that's why, you know, Instagram and place like Goalie Gear Nerd has like a million followers because people are interested in that. But one thing I can promise you, the people that follow those types of sites spend more than 10 minutes on it a day just going, hey, that's cool. If you just spend more than 10 minutes a day on it, you're wasting time or your career is already over. So if your career is already over, go spend all day on it. I'd rather watch a bikini Instagram. That will conclude the Q&A. Any final words? Before I die or just at the end of this? Speaking of the National Hockey League and people who have played in the National Hockey League, SidelineSwap.com is a great place for pro return new and new sport equipment that has come from the National Hockey League. The NHL guys, what they use, it is the best place on the entire internet on the face of this planet. Sideline Swap is the place you need to be going. There is a link in the description if you want to buy some filthy sick gear from SidelineSwap.com. Thank me later for the amount of money you're going to save, hassle you're not going to have to deal with from eBay, Kijiji, or Facebook Marketplace. I will see you in the next video.